Hello fellow Nerdcot readers. I'm sitting here with a pile of uh, Caldecott winner and honor books from 1952 and I was really excited that the 1952 Caldecott winner was Finders Keepers by Will and Nicholas because for 1951 I really loved the illustrations of Two Reds. Um, I had a beef with some of the stereotypes in the book, but I really love the illustrations, and I love the illustrations of Finders Keepers, too. I love the end pages of this book, especially with the two dogs. The one thing I don't like is I don't like this brown color, which seems to come up in lots of Caldecott books, the early Caldecott books. It's kind of the same color as Andy and the Lion and a few other things. It kind of reminds me of baby poop. But I do like the contrast with this really bright red. And I love the style of the illustrations. And this book feels a lot more modern with its text-to-picture ratio, the style of story that it tells that would make for a good read-aloud with some patterning that kids can get into in the read-aloud, a little bit of humor, um, just a much more modern feel to it than a lot of the books that I've been reading in these early years. So I really enjoyed Finders Keepers. Some of the honor books were very much more modern feeling too. Here we have Bear Party, one of the honor books by William Penne Dubois. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but I'm going to go with it. Pen Dubois. About koala bears who live in a koala park in Australia. And they get very angry with each other. And to solve this problem, they decide to have a masquerade ball. And the one thing I don't like about this book is that cultures are treated as costumes for this masquerade ball. But these koalas have this masquerade ball where they dress up in a variety of costumes so that no bear will know which bear is which. And they can get along again at this masquerade ball. And it kind of solves their problems. They have a great time. But afterwards... They can't tell each other apart without their costumes. They take their costumes off, but then they're not able to tell which koala is which. So they decide to keep a little piece of their costume on for a while until they're able to, to um, tell each other apart again. This one feels a lot more modern. The pictures are a lot more colorful and fun than some of the, um, the Caldecotts that I've been reading recently, and I like the little size of this book. It just, it's nice and small compared to some of these. has perfect pocket size fun. Pocket size bear party. And another one that had a more modern feel is All Falling Down. Much more modern feel this year. All Falling Down by Jean Zion and Margaret Bloy Graham. And this one definitely has a true picture book feel with uh, pictures with just a sentence or so on each page. This is about things that fall down throughout the year or different times. Water falls, apples fall, sandcastles by the sea fall down, leaves fall down, snow falls down, and the pictures feel much more light in this book than some others. And I've been keeping my eye out for some Mad Men style smoking in lots of these er early books. Here we have another example of a smoking man. Um, oh, I did forget to say that I like to look at dedications in books. Excuse my sniffles. And in Bear Party I especially liked the dedication at the front that says, It's for you! And the, the last one that I have to share with you is Mr. T.W. Anthony Wu, The Story of a Cat and a Dog and a Mouse. It is the last one I have to share with you because Skipper John's Cook by Marsha Brown, I will have to make a special trip to the Milestones Collection of Minneapolis Central Public Library where they have a collection that doesn't circulate of lots of different children's books. They have a copy there that I'm going to check out or take a look at at some point. I've gone there before to look at some early uh, Caldecott winner and honor books. Um, so I know it's there waiting for me to visit at some point. And then Feather Mountain by Elizabeth Olds I have not been able to track down anywhere around me. I'm not quite ready yet to buy a used copy for big bucks off of Amazon or wherever. Um, but I'm going to 
keep my eyes open, keep looking around. Maybe I'll find a copy of Feather Mountain somewhere around. And that leads me to my last book, Mr. T.W., Anthony Wu, The Story of a Cat, a Dog, and a Mouse by Marie Hall Epps. This one definitely feels like a lot of the early ones that I've been reading. Much more text-heavy, um, but very sweet story about a cobbler who has a cat and a dog and a mouse. And I like the dedication in this one to my cobbler who mends my spirit when he mends my shoes because he seems so at peace with life. And here we have the cobbler, the cat and the dog, and the little mouse's name is Mr. T.W. Anthony Wu, and he kind of saves the day in the end because the cat and the mouse and the dog and the cobbler all live together, and they're relatively happy, except the cat and the mouse tend to fight when the cobbler goes away, if they're both left inside. So that causes some problems. But then the cobbler's sister decides that she is going to solve those problems by moving in with them with her noisy parrot. And that doesn't go so well with the cobbler and the cat and the mouse and the dog. She thinks it's fabulous, but they're not having such a great time. So in the end, the mouse scares the sister into leaving and... The cobbler, the cat, and the mouse, and the dog. The mouse, T Mr. T.W. Anthony Wu. They're all happy, and they realize they shouldn't fight. They should just enjoy each other, and I like this picture at the end. So those are the ones that I have from 1952. I still have two more to track down, but happy nerd cot reading, everybody.